There's no greater suffering than having your birthday close to a major holiday, and this is no exception for one of the biggest holidays in the world, Christmas. We have all heard the tortured cries of these souls, only getting one batch of presents and maybe not even getting a separate celebration. But the truth is, this goes even deeper. If we dive into history, there's one person who was born on Christmas and received the worst present ever on one fateful December 25th. His name was Emperor John IV. But before we get to him, we need some context. Centuries of context. Let's dive in. The Eastern Roman Empire, which I will call the Byzantine Empire for brevity, was what remained after the Roman Empire split and the western half fell. Even before the official split in 395, the west was more culturally and linguistically Latin, and the east was more culturally and linguistically Greek. This division grew when Christianity drifted apart and eventually divided, with the Roman Catholics in the west and the Eastern Orthodox in the east. Over the next few centuries, Byzantium survived battles with the Arabs, Bulgarians, and Turks, though the latter of the three did the most to weaken the empire and led to a bunch of crusades in Anatolia and the Holy Land. In the very first years of the 1200s AD, a bunch of Catholic crusaders on their way to recapture Jerusalem from the Egyptians got involved in a side quest to sack Constantinople for reasons I'm not even going to get into in this video. In fact, they sacked Constantinople so hard that they kicked the Greek Orthodox Byzantine Emperor off the throne and replaced him with a Latin Catholic one, starting what would be called the Latin Empire. The remaining lands of the Byzantine Empire were split among different Byzantine noble families, each claiming to be the true empire even though none of them controlled the capital. In this video, we're going to focus on the Empire of Nicaea, founded by Theodore I of the Lascaris family. Over the next few decades, the Empire of Nicaea, along with its fellow Byzantine successor state the Despotate of Epirus, reconquered the former Byzantine lands until the Latin Empire was little more than the city of Constantinople itself. As this was happening, another noble family began gaining prominence in the Empire of Nicaea, the Paleologoi. Emperor of Nicaea John III even appointed one member, Andronicus Paleologos, as the Megas Domesticos essentially the commander-in-chief, and was one of the most important people besides the emperor. If we go forward another generation from Andronicus Paleologos and John III, we have their sons Michael Paleologos and Emperor of Nicaea Theodore Lascaris II. While their fathers worked together, Michael and Theodore were on opposite sides of many big issues in the empire. Firstly, Theodore didn't really prioritize finishing the job and reconquering Constantinople, even though it was basically the MO ever since the Catholics took it over. Instead, Theodore went to war with Bulgaria, even though his dead wife Elena was Bulgarian. Sure she would have been happy about that. Theodore also didn't really like or trust the nobility. Instead, his inner circle tended to be intellectuals and artists of low birth, like his best friend George Muzalon. Hey Theodore, when you're the emperor, philosophizing an art is cool and all, it really is. But you really should prioritize your empire and keep the nobility happy. Michael Paleologos agreed, and this led to a lot of beef between Theodore and his circle and Michael and the other nobles. It didn't help that Theodore II, as proved by his own writings, had a very cushy upbringing, and Michael had a relatively unstable upbringing, and for a time was primarily raised by his sister Martha. Alright, I think the stage is set. Let's talk about our video's main character. On December 25th, Christmas Day 1250, John Ducas Lascaris was born to Theodore II and Elena of Bulgaria. How cute and festive. His childhood was relatively uneventful. He did the normal stuff like learning how to walk and talk, but then his dad died from his worsening epilepsy in August 1258 before John was even eight years old. Of course you can't leave a whole empire to a child. So, as Theodore was dying, he appointed his best friend George to be John's regent to administer the empire as John grew up. Okay, John's a little shaken up now, but now he's Emperor John IV, and his dad's best friend has everything taken care of for now. All he needs to do is reach adulthood, and he's gonna be a full-on emperor. A few days later, Michael Paleologos led the nobles and a bunch of mutinous soldiers to assassinate George Muzalon and his buddies to take control. <coughs> By the way, this was during a memorial service for Theodore II. The disrespect. Anyway, Michael Paleologos is now the regent for John IV. A man who beefed with his dad, along with a bunch of nobles who also didn't like his dad, are now in control of John's empire. It's alright though, Michael is only the regent. Once John reaches adulthood, he can make his own imperial court. And maybe Michael is going to be a good regent, and give John the respect an emperor deserves. 
A few months after that, Michael had the Patriarch of Constantinople, in name only, Arsenius Satorianus, crown him emperor behind John's back. You know he's still technically the emperor, right? I get he's your rival's son, but damn dude, his dad hasn't even been dead for a year. For the record, Arsenios really wanted to crown John too, but there was so much pressure on him not to that all John got was a special headdress. Michael better do something cool to make up for this. Actually, he did. A few years after he usurped the throne, he actually succeeded in reconquering Constantinople and expelling the Latins from the city. After 57 years of exile, the Byzantines had retaken their capital and re-established the Byzantine Empire. Michael's popularity skyrocketed, and the Palaea Logos dynasty he established went on to rule for two centuries until they fell to the Ottomans in 1453. But what about the Lascaris dynasty? Did they remain co-emperors with the Palaea Logos dynasty? No. John was the last Lascaris emperor. Michael was insanely popular, and pretty much nobody cared about a child emperor whose father was already disliked. This left Michael with an opportunity to completely solidify his power. After recapturing Constantinople, Michael crowned himself as sole Byzantine Emperor in the Hagia Sophia. Then, on December 25th, 1261, John's 11th birthday, Michael VIII ordered John Lascaris to be blinded and imprisoned. He was sent to a fortress in the region of Bithynia, stripped of not only his crown and his dignity, but his eyes. While imprisoning your political rivals isn't a surprising thing to happen, you might be asking why Michael went through all the effort of blinding a child on his birthday. Well, he did it on the kid's birthday because he was an asshole. Maybe it was his way of expressing the Christmas spirit, but political mutilation in Byzantine culture was already a thing. Blinding was very common, partly because it was really good at reducing mobility and independence, but also because it made it impossible to lead an army into battle. Castration was also a thing because it was so emasculating and shameful. So let's be happy that Michael VIII didn't make someone cut off a kid's balls before they even dropped. But even if this type of thing wasn't unheard of, it never happened to a child prince. So Michael tried to keep the whole situation under wraps. Eventually, however, the news got around to Patriarch of Constantinople, for real this time, Arsenios Atorianos, who was rightfully pissed. No matter how much pressure was on him, this time he would be firmly on John's side. Early in 1262, Patriarch Arsenios excommunicated Michael VIII Pelea Logos from the church for the blinding of John IV Lascaris. Arsenios refused to repeal his decision, but once he died six years later, the new patriarch Joseph I Galiciotes was able to give him a pardon, reversing the excommunication. A lot of people were angry, and a schism occurred between the supporters of Arsenios and John and those of Joseph and Michael. But. This was later resolved, and Michael VIII remained on the throne and in the church. Despite support as the true Byzantine emperor by the Arsenites, John Lascaris spent the rest of his life as a monk. In 1290, a 39-year-old John was visited by Michael's son, Emperor Andronicus II Palaiologos, who was around the same age as John himself. Three decades after his father imprisoned and mutilated John as a child, the emperor humbled himself and apologized on behalf of his father even though the acts he was apologizing for were the reason why he was the emperor in the first place. Less than 20 years later, John Lascaris died, not even 60 years old. History is, is complicated. The hero who took back Constantinople and restored the Byzantine Empire blinded and imprisoned a child to consolidate his power. The way I see it, the good and the bad don't cancel each other out. They just both exist at the same time. So what's the takeaway from this story? Stop complaining if your birthday's near Christmas. I understand that you only get one present for both days, but the present you did get couldn't be worse than what John Lascaris got. And if it is, then I guess now you know you're not alone. Happy Holidays. Like and subscribe and see you next year.